Apple has finally delivered on a much anticipated update to the iOS interface. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is a walkthrough of iOS 7 Goldmaster Edition. We've said it for years now, Apple's iOS was in need of a facelift, and not just any facelift, an extensive one that visually put it on par with its rapidly updated competition. iOS, which debuted in 2007, still uses the same old interface with minor changes that have been made along the way, such as the ability to apply a wallpaper, notification center, and the task switching menu. In just one week, that changes, unless you've been running the beta since June. On September 18, Apple will push its massive iOS 7 update to the public for compatible devices, which consists of the iPhone 4 and newer, iPad 2 and newer, iPad mini, and 5th generation iPod. So what's new? What's different from before? Visually, almost everything has changed. Starting with the lock screen, it has been given a much cleaner appearance. It no longer looks cluttered and small, but is now much lighter and welcoming. You can slide to unlock from anywhere on the screen, and the camera quick access is still in the lower right corner but blends nicely with the rest of the UI. You may also notice two bars on the lock screen that weren't there before. In June, on Beta 1, these were arrows that pointed towards the center of the display. Paired with the subtle flashing text that reads slide to unlock, it was somewhat confusing as if sliding up would unlock the phone. But these are no longer arrows, and it's a lot less ambiguous. Sliding to unlock is clearly done by sliding from left to right. And the top and bottom bars are for something else entirely. The top is for a much cleaner and more useful notification center, which is now tabbed with the Today section All and Missed. Like the rest of the UI, it's slightly transparent, giving it the appearance of layers, almost as if you're pulling a glass pane down to look at your notifications. The bottom bar is something completely new to iOS, Control Center. Users have longed for a quicker way to access and toggle settings for as long as we can remember and Apple did so in a beautiful manner. Pull up from the bottom of the display anywhere. Control Center allows toggles for airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, and rotation lock. It has a slider for brightness, music controls, airdrop, and shortcuts to the camera, calculator, timer, and a flashlight toggle. If you have a pen set, you will also see the new pen lock page, which looks similar to the dialer with its circular dial pad. Like Control Center and Notification Center, this page is also slightly transparent, lending to the illusion of working in layers. Once you slide past the lock screen, you will quickly notice just how much has changed about the appearance of iOS. Every stock icon has been updated, flattened, and given a cleaner look. Pay close attention, and you may also notice that not all the icons are static. The status bar is now fully transparent. The signal indicator is a series of five circles instead of the standard five bars. And the battery indicator has changed as well. Oh, and the new color palette. It's difficult to miss. iOS certainly wasn't dull on colors before, and it most definitely isn't now. Before, the colors were very tame and mild. Now they're vivid, vibrant, neon. And with the translucence, everything seems to match whatever color scheme your wallpaper promotes. Speaking of wallpapers, iOS now offers dynamic wallpapers, which are basically no different from live wallpapers on Android. However, the static wallpapers, stock or your own, are given a subtle 3D effect. When you change the angle of the phone, the wallpaper shifts in the opposite direction to create the illusion that the icons hover just above the wallpaper. Folders have also been changed. Only 9 icons appear at a time, yet now folders are paginated, removing the 16 application limit. We can't say, however, that swiping through a series of pages within a folder is much more useful. You may also notice that Spotlight Search is no longer accessed by swiping one page to the left of the leftmost home screen. The icons simply bounce back and nothing happens. To access Spotlight, you now must pull down on the home screen. A nice, subtle, necessary tweak. Spotlight was never worthy of an entire page to itself. Even the Settings app and the App Store look entirely different, with a new, clean, white space interface. They're the same as before, but they incorporate newer, cleaner buttons and the new gestures. If you navigate to a submenu or an application page in either application, or any updated application for that matter, a gentle flick from the left edge to the right will take you back to the previous page. And all the buttons, from the share button to the pop-up menus have been simplified with narrow typeface and simple line icons. Speaking of the share button, it now reveals a more in-depth sharing menu, which includes airdrop and separated sharing options and actions. The keyboard no longer has a dark gray background. It's now light gray to match the rest of the OS, and it too is flat. That said, you will remain to see the old keyboard in applications that have yet to be updated. The task switching menu, accessed by a double tap of the home button, is also new, 
Like other operating systems, it utilizes a card UI, which gives a preview of the current status of the app. And the open apps can be dismissed by flicking the card up. And Siri, also accessed with the home button, has a new transparent UI as well. The camera application has two changed and been given a few more options, like a one-to-one -one aspect ratio for taking pictures for Instagram, as well as real-time filters and shooting mode. But overall, the camera app is very simplistic without a ton of built-in functionality. All of the stock applications, such as reminders, calendar, clock, notes, phone, safari, contacts, calculator, and everything else has been flattened and streamlined with a new design language. But there's a final point worth noting. In all of these changes, there is one thing that hasn't really been updated at all. iOS. Sure, it looks different, but it's virtually the exact same operating system it has been all along, with no new groundbreaking or awe-inspiring features. For some, that's perfectly fine. Others, however, aren't satisfied with the purely cosmetic changes. That's going to wrap this video up. If you enjoyed it, be sure to let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below and subscribe so you can see more iOS 7 and iPhone coverage over the next couple of weeks and months. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at Pocket Now. You can find me on Twitter at Casper Tech. I'm Taylor Martin, and I will see you next time.